Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Today we're going to be doing kind of a budget episode. We're going to be taking a look at three affordable offerings from a company called Maxace. Now, I've done a, a previous review on this brand. Uh, I did it on the Red Queen. Go back about six months or so, I believe, on my channel, and you'll find that. It's the same company that's making uh, Stedemon knives. So, in that sort of vein of inexpensive Chinese-made knives that are made with higher-end materials and pretty good build quality. We're going to be taking a look at the Gleed, uh, the Telopsis, and the Lanius. Very, very tongue-twisty kind of names, but those are the three models we're going to look at. I want to show you the packaging of each first as I open them, and then we'll talk about the knives individually. Now, the one that comes in the zippered case here is the Gleed. This is a little bit of a fancier knife. Oh, that's upside down. So you get the authenticity card in this that you will not receive in the other two. Because the MSRP on this is about 500 bucks. I'm seeing them sold for $350 at Blade HQ, so I'm going to go with that as being the price and judging its quality based on that, not of the $500 price. So, nice zippered case. Quick look at the knife before we get over to the other two. Uh, really, 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 I almost want to flip it. Uh, really nice looking knife here. Nice finishes, good quality components. We'll move that to the side. Uh, the next up is going to be in a magnetic flip lid cardboard box. This is the Lanius. Nothing else inside the box whatsoever, just a cardboard box. Quick little look at this. Ta-da! Alright, and then we'll move to number three, which is the Telopsis. Here you're going to get a little tool you're going to get an instruction manual. And that manual is basically a whoa, a breakdown of all the different components. Tells you all about the knife there and that's it. So it's not really an instruction manual, it's just a diagram. And we'll get that out of there. And there is the quick overall look of this one. And this is the one that I'm going to start with for the same reason that you're probably thinking, what in the world was up with that flipper tab? We'll talk about that in a second. Let's get the specifications out of the way first. Number one, overall length, eight and a half inches. Blade length, three and a half inches. Good, useful size and shape for that blade. A fairly thin blade stock, not particularly thick. It is Bowler M390, so you're getting a high-end premium steel. Uh, it's done to 62 Rockwell hardness, which is pretty darn high. And uh, let's see, to do this flat ground, this particular one has a stone wash finish, but they do offer, I, I believe, a uh, satin finish on these as well. Uh, handle length is 5 inches by itself. This is a titanium handle. I tell you, with the coating that's on there, it keeps you from really making it feel like it's titanium. I honestly thought it was aluminum, but going off the descriptions that I'm seeing, it's supposed to be titanium. Uh, I don't know if there's more than one version of this, because I did notice that Blade HQ had these listed as a frame lock. As you see, it is not a frame lock. It's actually a liner lock. And the weight is uh, just under 5 ounces, 4.80 ounces. Now, what makes this knife special is the flipper tab right here. Why is this special? Because the flipper tab, easily found, exposed right up here at the top. But when I flip the knife open, <gasps> where's the flipper tab? It's still right there. This is based off of Lee Williams' kickstop design. I did contact Lee before I did this video just to make sure that he did license this uh, technology, if you will, uh, over to Max Ace. He says, yes, we, we did do something. Um, they are uh, obviously allowed to manufacture the knife with the kickstop idea. So with that out of the way, this is not a knockoff of his kickstop. 
but it's also not a direct uh, copy of it in the way that he says, okay, you can use my kickstop and here's how I do it. The only kickstop I've owned, I've handled several, but the only one that I've owned was on a mongoose kickstop. And I didn't keep the knife for very long just because the blade finish, actually the blade finish was like this and I was expecting a satin. So it wasn't the exact one I wanted, so I didn't keep it. Uh, but the way that I saw that his kickstop worked, number one, it was on a frame lock. It was not on a liner lock. I have not personally seen a Lee Williams custom kickstop in a liner lock. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. The man has uh, made a lot of knives. He certainly may have made some that I haven't seen. However, this is a liner lock, which changes the properties of the kickstop a little bit. Because the way the kickstop works, when that flipper tab disappears, it works, it serves uh, integral to the lock. Since this is a liner lock, those are two separate things. doesn't seem to do that. So, when you flip this, let's go ahead and give you a close-up here. When you flip it, and the blade goes down, the flipper tab stops right here. It really becomes disengaged. It is not attached to the blade. That is a separate piece there. And once that blade has dropped down, flipper tab disappears, blade opens up. So you no longer have a flipper tab exposed anywhere on the knife. Now there are some knife makers that don't make flippers because they don't like the look of a flipper tab protruding from their design. They feel that it just takes away from the look. And you know what? I, I can't disagree with certain knives. Certain knives look better without a flipper tab than others. So here's your traditional flipper. It, that flipper is built as, it's, it's one piece part of the blade. So it's always going to be there. That's what we're used to. Here, you have an entirely separate piece, so it's not part of the blade. Now, there are two things about this knife that I do not like. For 350 bucks, that's what I see it at Blade HQ for. Their MSRP is higher. Again, it's $500 as well. For even 350, I don't like the cheap bent steel clip. I, I truly believe that should be a uh, 3D clip, a 3D machine clip, which I don't see. Yeah, here we go. Something like this. They did a great job on this knife, which is basically the same MSRP. I would have preferred to see a nice milled 3D clip as opposed to the, uh, the cheap spring clip. That's my one gripe. Uh, the other gripe is, and it's funny because I always tell people, you've got to put jimping on your flipper tabs. Well, that's fine when that flipper tab goes from here, doesn't stay here, it goes under here, okay? That allows my finger to engage it. The problem is with this, this kickstop style system, that flipper tab now stops right here. So what happens, and it's very aggressive, very sharp jimping, now my finger jams into it and has to run, run across it. Now, flipping it once or twice, that's not a big deal. But if you're somebody that's really flipping their knife a lot, they just enjoy sitting there opening and closing their knife back and forth, back and forth, then that is actually going to become rather bothersome as it starts to tear up the skin on your uh, finger. It also depends on how delicate your fingers are. I feel it. It doesn't hurt. Uh, a year ago, before I started working with my hands so much, it probably would have been a lot more irritating. Right now, it's I notice it, it's mildly irritating. If I sat here for an hour watching a movie, just flipping my knife open back and forth, that would really get to me. So having that severe jimping there does bother me, and I'm going to take a little knock uh, on the knife for that. But other than that, I think it's really, really well made. It's a nice, clean design. I see they've left themselves some uh, areas of opportunity here. This is obviously more of a skeletal design where they've machined pockets into the frame. Very cool, but I see very easily that they could be putting inlays in there for future more expensive models. I like that idea. It almost has the look of an integral, but it's not. It is uh, one slab, two slab, and backspacer all connected together. But it's machined very cleanly, looks good. Little gear pattern going on there in the full, full running backspacer. Appears to have a titanium pivot that's done in a nice blue anodizing with their logo etched into it. 
overall, it's a nice, clean design. I would have much rather seen this done in a frame lock uh, to get the true kickstop experience. But if you're buying this at a discounted price like I'm seeing on Blade HQ for $350, bucks, I do believe this is a good value. Again, I would prefer to see an upgraded clip, but you cannot buy a kickstop for $350. Bucks. As a matter of fact, if you are lucky enough to even find a way to somewhat somehow get your hands on a Lee Williams custom kickstop in whatever model, you're going to start around 3000 bucks. When I bought the Mongoose, it cost me over 4000 bucks. So that's really prohibitive for a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of people that will never, ever, ever experience a kickstop. So here, you get the opportunity to have that really wild system that I tell you right now, when you put it in somebody's hands, they're going to go, hey, where the hell did the flipper tab go? That's a very, very cool system. There's the lock up for you. And it's a really nice, smooth action. It drops in place very easily. The uh, blade shape to me is very, very, very reminiscent of a GTC. Uh, really the whole flow of the design reminds me of a GTC Airborne just a little bit too much. So it is slightly derivative. That kind of bothers me a little bit. But again, there you're looking at a three, four thousand dollar knife and up. So, you know, this allows somebody to get into that style of knife without having to spend that kind of money. So, for an affordable alternative, very, very cool. And you're getting a premium steel in the M390. That really lends itself to uh, good edge retention, high corrosion resistance, and it's a material that they can apply a lot of finishes, including mirror finishes, to should they choose to do so. So, you're not sacrificing anything by buying a lesser expensive knife that comes out of China. I think the build quality is good. Uh, this is not a knife that you're going to severely hard use, uh, hard use. so keep that in mind. Uh, but it is a great EDC size. It is a great EDC feel. Something that's lightweight, slim, easy to carry. It's got some neat little features to it. And it's got a good steel to use for everyday kind of stuff. Now we make our way over to the Gleed. Uh, I'm assuming that is the correct pronunciation. It's G-L-E-D-E. -E. And what you're getting in this is a titanium frame lock with red carbon fiber inserts. They do a few different colors of the carbon fiber inserts. I thought the red was pretty cool. I don't have anything in red carbon fiber, so I thought that was a really uh, unique way of adding something into my collection. Kind of neat. Very nicely done, too. It's a nice finish on that. Um, I've worked with some carbon fiber like this that I got from Italy called Turbo Carbon. Um, it has a really, really high luster finish. So this might be something very, very similar to that. You'll see you've got the silver wire threading going through there as well. So you've basically got black, silver, and red. Blue anodized back spacer. You have a mid back spacer and a rear back spacer. Those are two separate pieces. And that goes into the lanyard loop on the back side there. Clean finish all the way throughout. It's a really nice bead blasted finish. Very smooth, very matte. And then you have a blued titanium 3D mill pocket clip, which accentuates the look of the back spacers. If you're wondering, why didn't they do red? Because you can't anodize titanium red. It's a color that does not come out in the spectrum of what uh, titanium allows you to do. So there you go on that. There you also have a carbon fiber thumb disc. How interesting is that? And it does flick open really nicely. Like you can really get a good purchase on that and just flick it out. As far as slow opening, you can do that as well. Take a look at the finish on the blade. It is a high belt satin. Looks pretty good. I didn't uh, wipe it properly, so you're seeing some streaking in it. Uh, but it is a nice, clean, high belt satin finish. Then you have the inlay here of carbon fiber. And suspended within that is more steel. I haven't seen anybody do that. Uh, except for zero tolerance in a knife that costs more money. 
there is the branding of it and there is your steel now this is something uh, again where you're getting a premium steel M390 and a more affordable knife if you're buying it like I'm seeing it here on Blade HQ for 350 bucks I think it's a good deal I also really like that finger choil too like that a lot and it matches up with the thumb depression that they've put in right here if this were the full MSRP of 500 bucks I would say you're not doing bad but when you look at its competition at $500 I think you could do better so standalone for 500 bucks you wouldn't feel like you're getting ripped off at all you're getting premium materials you're getting you know the high-end pocket clip really nice frame lock really nice inlay work beautifully done great finishing all the way around however when you look at other knives that would cost you five hundred dollars I think you would find a lot of competition that you may appreciate more however at the 350 I think it's a good solid deal uh, I don't know how many dealers would be offering it at that discounted price and I don't know how long Blade HQ would be doing it either but by seeing that listed there at the 350 I really felt this was a solid deal now the birth card that comes with it will list everything the model name the blade steel including the hardness at 62 Rockwell they like to go up nice and hard that's really good and uh, handle is titanium and carbon fiber overall length blade length yada 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 did I go over I didn't go over all that let's talk about that in, in Imperial units uh, so we're looking at overall length of eight and three quarter inches blade length of three and three quarter inches so it is a bigger longer knife cutting edge however is only three and a quarter inches because of this large finger choil that you've got there it's a decent thickness to the uh, blade steel again uh, not overly thick not an overbuilt knife whatsoever it is M390 in a modified Warncliffe style flat ground as I mentioned before the belt satin finish Handle length is 5 inches and you're looking at 4.91 ounces. So it is a fairly lightweight knife for its larger size. Uh, I like the flickability. I like the overall action. It is nice and smooth. It is on bearings, of course. All three knives that I have sitting here in front of me are on bearings. Very slick, very smooth. Oh, I wanted to show you the lockup. There's your lock up there. I really have no reason to complain about anything on this knife. It was well built. It was well designed. Uh, I like the, the windows that they have here with the inlays. I like the fact that it's a frame lock that isn't naked on the lock side. You know, there are a lot of guys out there charging a lot of money for frame locks that could learn a very simple lesson here. Make the lock side look as nice as the presentation side. As long as you have the room to do it. And on a knife like this, you do. Uh, I like the milling that's been done here. It's got some character from pretty much every angle that you view it from. All this, by the way, these are, it's, it's like being hollow ground. So you've got a nice dish in there. Very, very cool. I mean, I'm sure they're doing this with CNC. That's why I, why I don't want to say that these are hollow ground swedges that are put in there. Uh, but they are really nicely dished. It's a comfortable knife in the hand. Um, don't really detect any hot spots, not even from the clip choke up on it there feels good overall I think it's a pretty winning design now we're gonna get to uh, as I like to say last but not least into the Lanius with the Digicam G10 inlays okay after a quick little battery change we're able to get into this sorry about that this is the Lanius and what they've done here is they've given you a stainless steel handle so it's a little bit heavier it's not uh, not as lightweight as titanium and that drastically drastically cuts down the cost and they've done inlays of G10 which is also very inexpensive so what you're getting here is a package for under a hundred dollars and I think that's really where a lot of people want to be when they're looking at uh, the whole Chinese knife thing you know, we've seen companies like Riat and companies like We Knives establish high-end knives with medium-range prices. 
but still a lot of people go, well, I don't really want to spend that much unless it's made in the U.S. And I, I get the sentiment. I understand why people are saying that, but, you know, we're seeing better and better and better quality come out. So here is the alternative. Gives you the lowest possible price and a really nicely made knife. The action isn't quite as good as the other two. Now, part of that is because it's a very thin blade and a very short blade, so, you know, just trying to do the gravity drop like that, it's not going to be quite as easy. But it feels fast and snappy when you're getting it open. I also really like the finish on this. Take a good look at this blade, then I'll give you the specs. So you've got this dark acid stone wash, this black wash look here. You have a satin finish on the flats and an inlay of carbon fiber. Now for me, I would have much rather seen the inlays on the blade match the inlays on the frame, but it's still very cool to see that, especially in a knife that's only a hundred bucks. Now also keep in mind, you're getting a steel that you may not be familiar with, but it's still pretty high end. I'll list that here in the specs. So we're looking at overall length is 7.875 inches and a blade length of a little over three and a quarter inches. So it is a pretty small knife. Uh, to give you the comparison here, put these two out together, put them butt to butt, and you see, yeah, there is a substantial size difference. This is definitely going to be on the small side of the uh, of the EDC spectrum. Cutting edge is only three inches on there, uh, and you're looking at Sandvik 14C28N steel. Now, most people have never heard of that steel, so I'm just going to give you a quick breakdown. Um, it is a higher end steel as far as the properties. Very, very, very corrosion resistant, and that's probably the, the single greatest claim to fame on this steel. It has a tendency not to chip or roll the edge. Um, they, are, they are able to bring this up to a really high rock. Well, I'm not sure where this is. One of the things I don't like about the steel is that you can run anywhere between 55 and 62 Rockwell. Well, when you have that much of a variance, it's kind of like anything else. When you do one thing really, really, really great, you're really great at it. When you do a lot of things well, you don't excel at any one particular thing. So the, the wear resistance is good, not great. Uh, the corrosion resistance is great. Um, you can roll the edge, but you're probably not ever going to chip or completely deform it. So, you know, it performs great in some areas and kind of just above middle of the road on the others. So you could really consider this more like an S35VN, but with greater corrosion resistance. So it's a good steel, it is a premium steel, and it's good for all around EDC use. Like I said, the edge retention is pretty damn good, it's just not great, it's not outstanding where you're going, oh my god, uh, the M390 will hold an edge longer than this will, but this is more uh, corrosion resistant, and it, it can take a little bit more abuse before you start chipping that edge. It also doesn't take quite as fine of an edge as M390 does. But again, for EDC tasks, that's not usually that big of a deal. It's still going to slice paper. It'll still cut through hair and all that kind of good stuff. I don't know how many of you are cutting through hair, but if you feel the need, you'll be able to just fine. Let's give you some close-up looks at it. Again, there is that, uh, that nice finish on the steel. That carbon fiber inlay, the custom pivot. The Digicam G10 inlays. Nice machining on the steel. I do like that. Again, it is heavy being a stainless steel frame instead of being titanium, but that's okay for a lot of people. There's your gear-shaped quarter-length backspacer with the lanyard opening. It'll take you a little bit of work to fish a lanyard through there because you've got to go down, across, and then back up and around, but I'm sure you'll be able to handle it. Uh, spring clip totally to be expected in the sub $100 price range. All stone wash finish on the steel, again that would be expected in this price range. And overall 
nice action. They've got jimping on the flipper tab, makes it easy to get it open very, very fast. And I just noticed that there's an inlay in the flipper tab. I had not noticed that before. And I do believe that is carbon fiber as well, but it's such a small piece. I'm not able to see any pattern to know that for certain. So it could be G10, uh, but I'm going to assume that it's carbon fiber because you have the carbon fiber for the inlay here. And uh, the weight on this is uh, just about five and a half ounces. For this size of knife, that is considerably heavy. Uh, that's only a half an ounce lighter than a full-size bodega. So that gives you an idea of the difference between using titanium and using stainless steel. This knife weighs considerably less. You can feel it in your hands. Let's give you a size comparison of all three. Keep reaching for the flipper tab on that one, gosh darn it. There we go. Butt to butt. Butt to butt to butt. Mm, that could be a new movie series. All right, so there you have it. There are the three sizes. These two are virtually identical in their size. Then you have the little mini right down here. And that's pretty much it. I wanted to give you guys a good fair look at all three of these, give you the... the my thoughts and give you some close-ups. As far as value goes, my personal opinions, uh, I think this is an absolute winner for its price. I think this is a really solid choice. Um, and again, because this is under a hundred bucks, I think that's a really, really good deal. I normally would not be attracted to this knife uh, for its size, for the, the choice of inlay material, and for the choice of handle material, but if you're looking at spending under $100 and you're looking for what seems to be a pretty hard use little knife, that's a really good way to go. Uh, as far as the Gleed goes, I love the action. It is so quick and it is so smooth. I like the touches of the carbon fiber thumb disc and the inlays. Uh, the machining's done exceedingly well. I think it's a really well-built knife. Uh, again, I would not spend $500 on it, so definitely look for the places that discount it. I think at $350, um, that that's a good deal. And uh, back to the Tylopsis. I like the fact that it's got the uh, kickstop action. I love how fast and smooth it is. Um, I do wish it had a nicer finish all around, to be honest with you. Um, you know, just having stone wash and the plain black frames, nothing wrong with that. But I think at its price point, we could have gotten a little bit more. If this would have been a, a hand rub satin blade or even a nice high belt satin finish, I think it would have added greater to the value. Um, I, I still do believe that the clip should have been upgraded. If we were shooting for 250 300 bucks, not a problem. But at that 350 that I'm seeing that sold for and the 500 MSRP absolutely needs that clip upgrade. But it's not a bad knife by any stretch of the imagination. I just think that they could have offered a little bit more in the value department. And that's it for these three guys. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Let me get this uploaded as quick as I can. And I've got a whole stack load of new uh, knives coming in. I've got a brand new custom coming in from Pete Skyke. It's Skyke Custom Knives. Uh, I have my next brown knives. You guys saw the parabolic that I did last year. I've got the brand new model coming in right now. Um, my Eric Oaks will be back from Eric very, very shortly. We made a few changes. I got a whole bunch of stuff coming, so stay tuned, and I'll bring some awesome high-end customs out to you right away.